SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. Tonight, the dirt keeps coming. The TID's acting director concedes they could have done a better job. Alliance in limbo. UMP divided over the nitty-gritty of proposed National Democratic Front. An earthquake off Java. Indonesia on alert over tsunami fears. Heads may roll. Sri Lanka cricket seeks more time to change the coaching staff. All these stories and much more coming your way this Friday, the 2nd of August 2019. From Adha Derana, this is Adha Derana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, a very good evening and welcome to First at Nine, another there in a 24 Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katharina Child. On to your top story tonight. Acting Director of the Police Terrorist Investigation Division, SP Jagat Nishanta, reveals although they were close to arresting Easter Sunday attack ringleader Zaharan Hashim, he outsmarted the police. Testifying before the Parliamentary Select Committee yesterday, he also accepted that there could have been defects in the documents they sent to the Attorney General's Department in relation to Zaharan Hashim and the organization National Tavi Jamaat. Acting Director of the Police Terrorist Investigation Division, SP Jagat Nishanta, testified before the Parliamentary Select Committee probing the Easter Sunday attacks as the final witness for the day yesterday. Japan Raja at the Navahana Clebuna, Eharaha, but I Kiava Clebuna, the Miss Saharan, Saha and TJ and Visheshing Hana. My Tan Eva Givahana, three forces of the Sri Lanka police, what Kohivat, Ona Marakadi, Ahane, Tiena, Kamar Magim, Kilometer, Sipahakuna, Durakin, Nakene, Capita, Andragan, Napuluan, Saharan, Tadangu, Tagan Nikela Warren. टेलीफोन अंतवादी Sahalan <laughs> Nevata <laughs> 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 <
එක දෙවනි ගුණුවක් යැවුවේ ඉතින් නීතිව දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ මහත්මරු යාට සිටුවේ ප්‍රමාණවත් ඉන්වෙස්ටිගේටිව් මැටීරියල් තිබුණ නැහැ කියලා මේ මේ අපිට තියෙන තොරතුරු අපි දෙන්නේ ඔබ හිතනවද NTJ එක තහනම් කරගන්න පුළුවන් වුණා නම් අන්තවාදී සංවිධානයක් කටයුතු වඩාල කරන්නට පහසු වෙනවයි කියලා ඇත්තම අපේ අදහස වුණෙත් ඒක සහරන් පිළිබඳව බුද්ධි අංශ වලින් ලැබිච්ච තොරතුරු ඒව පරිශීලනය කළා ඔහු ගන්න තියුණා ඔහු ළඟටම ගියා නමුත් අපිට ඔහු මග ඇරුණා ඔහු ඊට වඩා කපටිකමින් මග ඇරිය අපිව Bhambantota Eraj Ravindra Fernando has been sentenced to 5 years rigorous imprisonment by the Bhambantota High Court. He was sentenced over the case filed against him for threatening several UMP parliamentarians with a pistol during their visit to the Bhambantota Harbour on the 17th of April in 2014. Five suspects including the mayor were charged over the incident famously dubbed as the toy pistol case. Delivering the verdict, High Court Judge Chamara Tennakun today sentenced Eraj Fernando and another accused to serve five years in prison. The other three suspects in the case were acquitted and released. Eraj Fernando and four others were charged on 20 counts of attacking a team of politicians from the Colombo, from Colombo, including UMP MPs Ajit P. Pereira, Ajit Manna Peruma, Nalin Bandara, Eran Vikramaratna and R. Yogarajan, who were on an inspection tour of the South. Fernando was re-elected as the mayor of the Hambantara Municipal Council at the 2018 local authorities election after contesting from the United People's Freedom Alliance. President Maithi Palasiri Sen is yet against a critical of uh, politicians who are determined to thwart his efforts to implement the death penalty for drug convicts. The head of state was speaking at prize giving ceremony of the inter school competition for creations made under the theme drug eradication held at the Sir John Kodalavala College in Kurunagala today. The question I have is why those who are in parliament in such a haste to cancel the implementation of the death penalty. Following these to Sunday attacks on the 21st of April this year, a public consensus came up that new laws should be passed in order to prevent such incidents in the future. Although no such law is still passed even after three and a half months, they have brought laws against the death penalty. How strong are these drug racketeers? It is politicians that strengthen these dealers. They have control over every Everything with their money. The UMP, who are expected to form a broader political alliance next Monday, have attracted various views from within the party following a meeting held at Temple Trees last evening. However, a decision has been reached during a meeting at Temple Trees last evening to go ahead with the signing of the MOU next Monday. The decision was arrived at after several proposals put forth at the Working Committee on amendments to the new alliance's constitution was accepted by the party leadership. The draft constitution for the proposed alliance did not receive approval at the United National Party Working Committee meeting held at the Temple Trees yesterday. It is in this backdrop a decision was taken by the party leadership to make several amendments to the constitution last night with the presence of other leaders from the National Freedom Front. Speaking to other Derana General Secretary of the United National Party, Minister Akila Viraj Karyavasam said that during last night's meeting, it was decided to go ahead with the signing of Memorandum of Understanding to enter into a new alliance next Monday, the 5th of August, as initially planned. Meanwhile, non-cabinet minister Ajit P. Peri represented the proposed amendments for the constitution to the party leadership by way of letter. Among the proposed amendments put forth for the constitution is that the secretary of the proposed National Democratic Front should be a member of the United National Party, while the official address of the alliance will be the UNP party headquarters at Sirikota. It has also been proposed that the UNP should hold the decisive power in the decisions-making process of the executive committee of the alliance. It also states that the tenure of the alliance's leader should be guaranteed for two years. Furthermore, the presidential candidate of the proposed alliance should receive approval at the joint meeting between the UN PMPs and the Working Committee. Several UN peers voiced their views on the UNP Executive Committee meeting held last evening at various forums today. The United National Party has given its blessing to the leader to go ahead with the formation of a broad political alliance. Discussions are being held because there were various views raised by several UNP MPs and ministers on the constitution, it was decided to make certain amendments. We formed a committee and hope to present the amended constitution to the leader in two days. Uh, 
ඕනම පක්ෂක සන්ධානගත වුණාම ලේකම් තුමා ලේකම්නේ බලවත්ම තනතුර ලේකම් තුමා ගියොත් සෙසු පක්ෂ වලින් කවුද දැන්ට විරෝධය දක්වලා තියෙන සජිත් ප්‍රේමදාස මහතුමාගේ නම යෝජනා කිරීම මනෝ ගණේෂන් රව් ෆකීම් Manu Ganesh and Rao Fakim Rishad Badidin and P Digambaram all said that their parties and the majority of their areas prefer Sajid Premadasa. Etumal lagi England ne Sajid Premadasa mattuma kene. Deliye me rasim awasan vela ena me Sajid Pakshya Amartya Varun gindan bodunum sadahan kara me paswendara me kaatsan karana ipas thama apekshika thirne karana. Me api kene paswendara atsan karana epa kene thama api sadahan kare. E kene me kole wahala gahanna adane ekane. Sheshema Agustu Paswenida on the 5th of August we will be forming a new alliance led by the UNP in preparation for elections. Idiyata idiri mathivarnita sodana min sitinawa. Maatmi aanduwa thamai inne namuth kridawata ambune. I have openly said that I support Sajid Premadasa and because of that there are those who have said that I will be removed from my position as sports minister. Therefore I wish to tell certain individuals who played a part in destroying this government that I will help Sajid Premadasa and if he wants he can remove me from my posts. I will hand my resignation because as I said if Sajid Premadasa is not nominated then I have no interest in engaging in politics any further. This is my personal view. <laughs> We held a lengthy discussion on how to make the 5th of August a success without letting anyone destroy our efforts. The people will witness a turning point of this country very soon. We will put an end to becoming henchmen for foreign nations. I wish to tell you all that if the right decision is made, then we will be able to introduce a top government and a president. This is the message that I wanted to spread. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka Pudujana Pirumina points out that Sri Lanka is heading towards uh, recording the slowest economic growth rate in Asia for this year. Speaking at a media briefing held in Nelumbavata today, UPFA parliamentarian Dr. Ramesh Patirena also revealed uh, their preparations for the upcoming national convention, which is scheduled to be held on the 11th of this month. As per the chairman of the election commission we should be having the presidential election of the country by 23rd of november so the last possible dates would be 15th of november or the 23rd of november the national convention of the sri lanka podujana peramuna in that particular event would nominate the national leader of the sri lanka podujana peramuna and also the candidate of the sri lanka podujana peramuna the candidate of the sri lanka podujana peramuna is the person who is giving the leadership to the all the opposition groups of this country and he would be the ideal candidate as expected and anticipated by the greater majority of the Sri Lankan people parallel to that under the leadership of honorable basil rajapaksha we are spearheading with our grassroots activities we are forwarding our national agenda in relation to national security and also about our economy and occasion health and youth activities etc by mid september this year during the first quarter of 2019 sri lanka had the second lowest growth rate in the southeast asian region and afghanistan was the only country behind us we had at that time only 3.2% of economic growth rate when it comes to second quarter of 2019 as per the estimates of the governor of the central bank we are going to record something below 2% so this is the lowest economic growth rate asia is seeing and also that's the lowest economic growth rate we are probably seeing after year 2000 country needs a change Doctors of several hospitals including Chilao, Putlam, Anamadua, Karapitiya and Kegal claims that there is a shortage of essential and other supportive drugs in the country. The claim is also supported by the Government Medical Officers Association. The Medical Supplies Division and the Director General of Health Services however deny any suggestion of a drug shortage. Several factions including the Mahargama branch union of the Government Medical Officers Association claimed that the country is facing an essential cancer drug shortage. We have called upon to educate to the authorities that there is a severe shortage of drugs in the National Cancer Institute. Cancer is a sensitive topic and supply of the essential cancer drugs has to be maintained throughout. However, in last few months we have noticed there is a shortage of essential drugs. The directly cancer drugs and supportive cancer drugs and theater essentials there's a drug called enoxaparin which prevents the blood clotting of the legs so it is very common in cancer patients the blood clotting of the legs but if that blood clots directly goes to the lung the patient will immediately die so that is actually a life saving drug but there's a shortage of that drug 
and whereas some people has to buy outside and for some we have to depend on the donation we tried our level best to make these services uninterrupted so far we have succeeded there's no service breakdown at the moment however there is a difficulty to maintaining of these services we convey our message to the director of the head of the institution and of course the chief pharmacist they have been put up request to the medical supplies division and the level of the ministry where the funding is available but we understand is that this is not been happening so the drugs is supply is not there very high end expensive drugs are available but essential very simple drugs are not available it's nearly 35 drugs at the moment out of stock no stock at all However, responding to the claims Director General of Health Services, Dr. Anil Jha Singh had denied such drug shortage in the country, adding there are mechanisms in place to address a shortage if there was to be one. There is no shortage of drugs in Sri Lanka. Unlike the past, MSMIS software is in place, which is a more transparent system pertaining to drugs. There are alternative drugs that can be used for certain medicines if they run out. If we have a shortage of essential drugs, relevant hospitals and institutions can purchase them from the local market. Even though there are claims of a drug shortage, the supply of essential drugs is done successfully. The Medical Supplies Division of the Ministry of Health also weighed in, rejecting the claims of a drug shortage in the country. In addition to yesterday's claims, many other doctors also voiced their concerns today over a shortage of various drugs, including antibiotics, anti-diabetic drugs, asthma medications and certain other medicines used for heart diseases. The Kalambo High Court has issued warrants to arrest Chairman of Avant Garde Nisankayapa, Sena Adipati, and former Chairman of Rakna Lanka, Mayor General Palita Fernando. Other than a report, it said that the duo did not appear before court when the Avant Garde case was taken up before Kalambo High Court Judge Shashi Mahindran today. The defense attorney representing the Avant Garde Chairman informed court that his client is currently receiving medical treatment at a Singaporean hospital. Former Rakna Lanka chairman's attorney told a court that uh, their client is under remand custody at present over another ongoing case. The High Court judge then issued arrest warrants on the two defendants as they failed to present themselves before the court. The Bribery Commission filed a case with the Columbia Magistrates Court against the former Defence Secretary and eight defendants for incurring a loss of 11.4 billion rupees to the government by allegedly allowing Avant Garde Maritime Services Private Limited to maintain a floating armory at the Gulf Fort. Now it has been a little over four months since the Easter Sunday attacks rocked Sri Lanka claiming many lives and even scores injured. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranji today looked into the well-being of those who were affected by the attack that took place at St. Anthony's Shrine in Koch Chikade. It is one of the three churches targeted by the terrorists. Sit Saranakaritas Colombo organized a special program at the Archbishop House today for those affected by the Easter Sunday terror attack on the St. Anthony's Shrine in Koch Chikade. The program was held under the patronage of Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit. During the program, His Eminence looked into the welfare and blessed those who were victimized by the incident. Financial donations too were distributed during the program. The price of imported milk powder has been increased by 15 rupees per kilogram. Moreover, the price of an imported packet of milk powder weighing 400 grams will be increased by 5 rupees. According to the Consumer Affairs Authority, the price hike is in effect from, uh, was in effect from last midnight. The global fitness community turns its eyes towards Wisconsin, USA as the world's finest athletes showcase their determination to be named fittest on earth. 
for the first time ever two Sri Lankans Andy Andrews and Kirshini Vitarana uh, represented the country in the 2019 CrossFit Games which got underway yesterday. In a quest for the world's fittest man and woman, the CrossFit Games are held for the 13th time and will be held across four days. Being crowned national champions of Sri Lanka, Andrews and Vitarana earned themselves invitations to the CrossFit Games. CrossFit was formally introduced to Sri Lanka with the launch of CrossFit Ceylon in 2018. At the Games, the United States tops the scoreboard in both men's and women's categories with 200 and 194 points respectively. And with that, we cross over to a short commercial break, but make sure you stay tuned for more news right after that. Welcome back. Global Chief of the Chartered Financial Institute Paul Smith says that competition for capital globally is the biggest constraint for many developing markets at present, including Sri Lanka. Despite this, however, speaking at the Colombo Stock Exchange recently, he went on to add that the country is on the right track towards developing its capital market using the country's geopolitical position. President of the Chartered Financial Institute, Paul Smith, opened trading at Sri Lanka's Colombo Stock Exchange recently, ringing the ceremonial bell. The advent of the CFA and the advent of CFA charter holders, I think, took the uh, industry of financial analysts to a new paradigm. It created a lot of impetus, brought in uh, a lot of new vibrancy, apart from the fact that the CFA charter holders themselves bring more than the new analysts. Uh, they also bring in a degree of uh, good governance and ethics, and best practices uh, that we have seen. So that has been a, a very welcome feature to the capital markets. During the event, Chief of the Chartered Financial Institute, Paul Smith, was questioned on possible constraints for Sri Lanka's capital market. The biggest constraint for all developing markets is the competition for capital globally. It is quite difficult to get the attention of the global investing public, if you think about that in terms primarily of the United States and of, of Europe. There are so many options now for capital. So I think that's the biggest constraint, is that capital at the moment for developing markets is quite narrowly constrained in any event due to the fact that gl growth globally is quite shallow. The competition for resources is that much higher. But I think when I look at Sri Lanka, I look at its geopolitical positioning, the work that your government is doing to position your capital market uh, for the future. I think you're doing all of the things that you need to do. The biggest constraint, unfortunately, today is, is global liquidity for developing market investment. And that's unfortunately something that, that is out of your control. Smith was also questioned on China's rise of becoming an economic superpower and its impact on the global economy. Uh, why do you see there is such a huge growth compared to other regions in East Asia? I assume East Asia is code for China. Which, um, China is taking its place at the world's top table as an economic power. Our job in China is not to interfere in the way that the Chinese government runs its country, but to help China provide the human talent that is going to help that country grow. I think that's really the root cause of, of what has been exponential growth in, in that region. And that's wonderful for the world. And I think that's a, a point that sometimes uh, is missed. The world needs a vibrant, strong, ethical, technically competent China uh, to help us all drive our growth ambitions going forward. Sri Lankan shares recovered from an intraday fall of over 1% to close flat today. The Osha price index ended 0.04% down at 5,894 0.70, a one-week low, whilst the S&P S20 lost 0.64%. Meanwhile, the stock market had a turnover of 900.2 million rupees, more than this year's daily average of about 641.1 million rupees so far. Furthermore, foreign investors sold a net 112.5 million rupees worth of shares, but they have been net buys of 513.9 million rupees worth of equities uh, so far this year. Let us now take a look at how the Colombo Bourse performed during the week. 
During the week, the ASP gained 0.4% mainly due to price gains in counters such as LOLC Holdings, Ceylon Coal Stores and Hatta National Bank. Meanwhile, the S&P SL20 decreased by 0.6%. The average daily turnover for the week was up from last week to 1.3 billion rupees. Diversified sector recorded the highest sector turnover during the week. Furthermore, foreigners remained active for the week, closing as net sellers, where foreign sales accounted for 37% of the total weekly turnover. A net foreign outflow of nearly 686 million rupees was recorded for the week. This resulted the year-to-date net foreign inflow to decrease to 556 million rupees. Out of the weekly turnover, crossings accounted for nearly 17%, which was a higher proportion than last week. Indonesian government directed its people living near the coast to evacuate to high ground following a powerful earthquake off the island of Java. According to news reports, the quake put, US, uh, put by U.S. monitors at a magnitude, magnitude 6.9 risked generating a tsunami 3 meters or 10 feet high. The quake struck at depth of 52.8 kilometers at around 7 p.m. local time. Tremors were felt in many cities, including the capital Jakarta. However, there were no immediate reports of damage or casualties. Meanwhile, the Department of Meteorology in Sri Lanka, when contacted by First at Nine, confirmed that there is no threat posed by the earthquake to the country. Sri Lanka Cricket's Executive Committee made an appeal to Minister of Sports Harin Fernando today requesting the coaching staff be given time until the end of the New Zealand tour in Sri Lanka to step down from their positions. The appeal was made following a meeting with the minister this afternoon. The minister called the national team's coaching staff to step down following a disappointing World Cup campaign this year. He called for the contracts of the coaching staff to be renegotiated, saying their remunerations, especially that of the head coach, does not match the results of the field. With uh, Sri Lanka cricket seeking uh, more time to change, the, the coaching staff, Minister of Sports, Harin Fernando, says he called for the resignation of the national team's head coach to make the team get better as the coach isn't a good fit. Responding to media today, the minister proceeds to say that chairman of the ICC will pay a visit to Sri Lanka this month in order to look into several matters, among which is the construction of a new stadium in Colombo. The chairman of the ICC and I had a good discussion. We made arrangements for him to visit Sri Lanka for three days starting from the 23rd of this month. The ICC is not keen on appointing interim committees due to political interference. Zimbabwe is a prime example in this regard as an official appointed by its president had all the money transferred to his account. The ICC is suspicious about a similar incident in Sri Lanka pertaining to a stadium we built spending 5 billion rupees. ICC chairman agreed to support the concept paper we presented and he assured to deploy one of his representatives. With TV rights set to come in at the end of this year, those who are incumbent and those who are waiting to come in are excited. The ICC said that an official will be deployed to look into the matter as well. The Sri Lanka team must have trust among themselves and in themselves. Winning or losing is not of paramount importance, but the conduct and unity are. I was of the view that unity should be built among players. We made many moves and they were successful. One of it is to send Hathra Singha home and I hope the team will be more successful. Not necessarily because Hathra Singha is bad, but there is a mismatch. During his visit, the ICC chairman will also check on building a new stadium in Colombo. And that is all for tonight. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.